Hello, my name is Ava Mooseball and this is my authentication project where we uncover the origins of art. In my presentation today, I will be talking about the Getty Koros. The Getty Koros is just one example of the many korori, which are statues of young men, found across ancient Greece. They were often positioned in temples and places of importance as they resembled strength and youth, particularly of the upper class. Many koroi are on display around the world, but a very specific koroi in the Getty Museum in the Los Angeles, California is famous not for its beauty and history, but for its controversy. The Getty Koros has puzzled art historians for years, as no one has posited it's an authentic Greek statue. Its description at the museum was Greek 530 BC or modern poetry. There's not much faith in its authenticity, it was taken down from the public eye in 2018 and now has the example image for the Britannica entry for the term art fraud. Its purchase was also a fake. The paperwork the lawyers used to track provenance, which is its earliest known origin, was forged. The documented history of the statue was an elaborate ruse, so there is nothing known about the statue, no fine sight or date of discovery. So how do we know if this statue is real or fake? Well, we're going to be covering two different categories of analytical techniques scientists use to determine its authenticity. First is stylistic and technical analysis. This statue matches no other corollary discovered. Well, it would be easier to say it matches a lot of different corollary at the same time. It's a mishmash of different styles from separate regions which is never seen in the other statues. The closest parallel hairstyle comes from the late 7th century. The finger joints resemble a style from the 2nd quarter of the 6th century, and the feet are comparable to statues from the 3rd quarter of the 6th century. The sculpting of it has also been best described as insensitive. Most of the other koroi are near perfection, with minimal scratches and mistakes, not counting the millennia of natural erosion. Greek sculptors would abandon any project with even the slightest visible errors. They took their work extremely seriously. The Getty Koros has mistakes all over, with scouring and lines visible on the forehead, with no great detail or care to the fingers or the build of the hand. Not to mention that a forged Koros torso was discovered that bore remarkable resemblance to the Getty Koros. This fact isn't giving much significance, however, because the styles used on both are dramatically different. In the second analytical technique is scientific. There were three notable scientists involved in the Getty Koros controversy. Norman Herz and Stanley Moglitz both found evidence that supported its authenticity, while Miriam Kastner found evidence opposing it. Herz measured the carbon and oxygen isotope ratios in the statue to find its provenance. Since scientists know the constant decay rate of these isotopes, they can match the amount of the isotopes in the rock of the statue to the rock at its place of origin. They can also find out how old exactly that rock is. He determined that the marble was from a mine in Thassos, where the rock on the ground matched the statue ratios perfectly. Margulis determined that the statue had undergone de-dolomitization, which is where the magnesium content is slowly leached out of the stone over many years, which forms into magnesium oxides, hydroxides, and silicates, resulting in a layer of calcite on the surface of the statue. Since this process takes an incredible amount of time in the perfect conditions, Margulis concluded that there was no way it could be a fake. Castor, however, took Margulis' theory and ran it on its head. He determined that with enough time and effort, de Dolomitization could be performed in a lab. However, it was time consuming and complicated work, so people doubted that a forger wouldn't even try to attempt something so difficult. And this debate is still ongoing. Even though the Getty Koros was taken down from the public eye in 2018, scientists continue to run tests to determine its authenticity. In my opinion, it seems like a very convincing forgery. With the lack of details and mistakes in the Getty Koros directly contrasting all of the other Greek statues, there's no way this could have been created in that time period. It would have been thrown away to preserve the pride of the artist that he failed to meet the high expectations of Greek sculptures. 
and the stone could have been obtained by this forger from Thassos. It might have been a little difficult, but it's probably possible. And then they would have artificially caused the dolomitization to occur. And even though it's said to be a difficult process, the museum paid $8 million for the statue. It would have been well worth it to spend the time doing that. The end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. It means a lot to me that you watch this video. So thank you so much and have a nice day.